Good morning. Buenos días. Bueno, pues vamos a. Well, we're going to start. A llevar a cabo este encuentro. This meeting into place. Informarles que. And inform you that. Ya. Se llegó a un acuerdo. We've come to an agreement. El conflicto. With the conflict. De la policía federal. Of the federal police. Agradecerle mucho. And to. A la gente. Show our, explain that we're very appreciative to the citizens because they're the ones that help us con su with their participation. No se sostiene ningún movimiento we don't sustain eh, any si movement no without apoyo, respaldo, the backing ciudadanos. of the citizens. Y, eh, en encuestas, and when it comes to uh, questions or being measured, they manifested that they were not happy, of, or the people weren't happy with the attitude of a certain group of, of the police, of the federal police. It did not look apparent, apparently well, especially the aggression to, to the mandates and the aggression towards a woman. Not, and also the taking control of the streets, that was not seen well. In addition to that, you cannot disqualify all the uh, uh, elements of the federal police. To start with, they have rights to manifest, to express themselves. We are free. Additionally, in some cases, they've acted by not counting on that information sufficiently and they were misinformed that they were going to be fired that they were going to take away their benefits that, that their um, work was going to be dissolved. That was a, a legitimate preoccupation. But also there was a dark hand involved. Without a doubt. It was managed with bots on the social webs. Thousands of uh, bots on certain accounts uh, created by companies that have that um, business that they uh, do that as a, as a business. And they work uh, this doing this on the webs. In any case, still I think they're called the holy webs. However, there exists that manipulation. It's not prosperous because the truth people are very awake now and they're very in tune like never before it's a phenomenon it's incredible they can mount a campaign and, and to try to drown the webs 
with messages against and with the utilization of uh, robots and it still won't go forth. And they do not have good results be do because of the citizens. And that's why I appreciate the people very much for their support, for their backing, for, with which the, uh, they're conscious of uh, the situation. And we're going to continue the selection. So that those that um, can want to go into the uh, National Guard and they meet the requirements, and that those that don't want to join can participate in the National Guard, they'll have uh, other occupations. They might be under, uh, like, for surveillance, uh, public functions, other jobs. But they will not be fired. Additionally, let it be clear, because yesterday I saw precisely saying that that the ninis used to earn more than the police and that's very interesting to clear that up first of all because of the spectatorship uh, or to call um, ninis of these young people no, neither do they have jobs neither do they have uh, school that's all the government ever did uh, previously in the previous governments was to label them ninis that was the great creation that they had that phrase or that word, ninis. They never did anything for the young people. So they discriminated against them, and they still continue with the same behavior. I recall that some time ago, there was a campaign when I uh, uh, said that we were going to uh, uh, train the children as or young people as apprentices, 600,000 are already working. Uh, we're shooting for a million short, and up to 23, 2,300,000. And there will not be a single young person without a job or, or work. And initially, it generated a reaction that was very conservative against it, against giving uh, opportunities to the young people. And the other thing was, it's a lie. of the Guard, National Guard, will earn 19,000 pesos monthly as they, uh, on the, to start with. The, the least paid will be 19. And then they'll have their benefits. Social Security. So we need to inform you of that as well. 
so that we can start, you know, clearing all these campaigns of lies that have been presented. And then things turned out okay, though. So he's pointing at someone. Regarding the federal police, has, there has been an interesting thing. What about the ones that don't pass the test to keep cool? Can, can, they, can they be sent to the states that no longer have um, enough police? They're again threatening uh, tariffs. And what is he playing at, this uh, Trump? You know, he's threatening uh, tariffs again. What is your perception regarding the US and the people of the US? And Donald Trump is also talking to the people of the US. How can we take this new threat in the middle of these things. What is he playing at? Uh, regarding the first question, there is there is no um, um, all the elements will be uh, put in new positions. There's works, there's areas in other areas that the vigilance and security. That's what we're resolving. There's places that have, uh, tables that have been uh, installed in order to inform the police of their options. And we don't want there to be uh, misinformation or confusion so that they can have all the information firsthand. However, with the security or assurance that, that they will not be uh, fired nor mistreated, that they will be attended the way they deserve to be, always always attended to. No, nobody's requested that. Regarding yesterday's um, uh, uh, tariffs for steel, today we're having a meeting to deal with this matter. Jesus Yade, as has informed me, es que es una medida it's a measure different a las que se han than, than what has been applied before, or the threat of um, tariffs that was presented a few days ago. Es, uh, de otro orden. It's a different Sin order. Embargo, However, eh, we are going to attend to it, to this matter. We were already looking at that regarding tomatoes. That time has passed and it has affected the producers. Yes, we do have information. because it is our responsibility that in the case of the tomatoes, especially, there's political interests, electoral, in the US in particular, and in Florida, They're being directed by a certain party and a certain legislator of the U.S. No puedo decir más 
I, I can't say anything more on that because we need to be respectful of, of the internal politics of other countries. However, but we are aware and we're going to be doing uh, uh, certain gestures in both cases. What it has to do with the tomatoes uh, has passed a lot of time, and it's unjust completely that they be that they be charging tariffs and also. And also, what was uh, made known uh, yesterday regarding steel. Yes, I want to separate these measures these are um, uh, separate um, decisions that have nothing to do with the treaty in a direct manner of free trade agreement uh, Jesus Yaya was telling me that neither with the resolution of removing uh, for steel and, and aluminum as it was removed in the past it's of a different nature so tomorrow we will inform and uh, the secretary of foreign relations will be here and the economy secretary and our representative a social that is in charge of negotiations of commercial economic um, with the u.s Regarding the federal police, one of the federal TV is revising with vigilance on the roads. Are they going to be doing this persecution with special vehicles? Sometimes they used to follow you for different things like dark windows or uh, anyone who conducted on the roads. Will they continue to have the, uh, the uh, will we be protected against uh, people that attack you on the roads? And this transition with the National Guard. 60% did not want to talk about the conflict. The principal question is, will they, will they continue to operate the same way that they used to operate it before. And will we have the um, support? The police for the roads, federal, will continue. That is not a function of the National Guard. They're going to continue their same uh, federal road the federal road police is still the same and they're going to be informed but that service will continue and they will continue to do those who work for that corporation because we have to be careful 
in es everything that the service be better and that they protect citizens no and there not be any extortion no that there be no corruption no but not only in in the uh, federal road police but also in the government in conjunction with them <laughs> that they need to end corruption it's to clean completely of corruption this government from top to bottom that is to clean of corruption this government and immigration in uh, the uh, en ports of entry in, in police in everything that there not be extortion, um, bribes, um, coyotes, which is, like, they're those ones that take advantage of people. I'm, I'm waiting to apply a new law of confidence for the citizens that will consist of taking away inspectors from businesses, commercial centers, inspectors for restaurants all the economic uh, activity to remove them from the public service the only thing we're thinking about is we need to we have to encourage that there won't be any raises or increases in energy uh, services, gas, and electric for the consumer. But in general, we want that to disappear. To give to the citizen all the confidence and trust, and that with a simple manifestation <coughs> that, that they swear to tell the truth, <coughs> they express that they understand their obligations, what is demanded by law and according to the rules, and they sign that manifestation. That one that has a business or establishment, commercial establishment or business or factory, um, some kind of business. And he's mani manifesting everything and with a system of um, like a where you kind of uh, just pick at random. They're going to be checking like a supervisor will check on like random. But whoever only the ones that are going to be like a, a raffle, like a selection, and they'll go to do a, an inspection. So we want to invite the cameras for this, a commercial for the businesses, for the representatives, for the business owners and they can accompany them so that they can be sure if they are complying with what was on their manifest. In the case that it is being dealt with properly, they will be a, recogn a recognition as a good citizen, like a cert certificate.
el que no and the one that does not meet the standards eh, or comply de la sanción, according to their sanctions ya no va a tener derecho, then he will no longer a have a right to participate en in this system de fiscalización de la supervisión or of, super, of supervision regarding the uh, the lottery kind of they will lose their confidence and this will start uh, at a little ahead and that is in order to combat a corruption from the bottom otherwise what am I going to do sit up here talking that there's no corruption And the owner of a restaurant says to that man, or that man says, he's a liar. He's a thief or demagogue. How can he say that there's no corruption if the inspector came for his quota for his <laughs> bribe? Of course, in order to do that, it's a process. But we have to start cleaning up from the top, from the top to the bottom. Because what used to happen was, whenever they talked of corruption, they spoke of bribes. And and where it came from above. And they didn't say nothing about that. It was like a, a tip or an extortion of the, the person functioning on the bottom. And on the top, they were, de they were uh, dedicated to stealing officially but they always had that hypocrisy of, of uh, saying that the ones on the bottom were the ones that were to blame the ones that were transiting coming and going from the ones from the little window and that's why we all have to advance in ending corruption. Second question is, we know that So the people are talking about um, some um, via is not, or I guess it's like a bus route, has been seven years and they have not concluded that work. In 2012, uh, Peña Nieto stopped the works for 18 months and he said he would uh, finish it and he never did and then Jaime Rodriguez came and he also he assured that he would he said it would work by 2017 and now it's already passed and he's leaving and the work is still stopped and the people told me that the parts that were done are deteriorating and also the money has come to finish it uh, several times and they do not apply it to it. That they only uh, are taking the money. They assigned 600 million that should not have been used for anything else. And now the time of 2019 and still they haven't uh, started 
Hay que recordar, seis, presidente, years. que Nuevo León es, y no el principal Nuevo estado, León uno de los principales que generan recursos para generate otras entidades. Esto ha sido por todo el sur y el sur de la ciudad. Y también por el is going on or what's your opinion regarding this very important work that's on hold? We are supporting the government of Nuevo León and will continue to do so because it's a state that in effect is very important that has an economy that is an expansion. They are creating many jobs. Many go to look for their way of life in, in that state and other states. And that's why it's growth in the metropolitan area. It's an state that has always been and it's a state that has always been characterized by its dynamite and working people. And we're going to help. We do have a plan that we are taking uh, into a meeting in conjunction with the uh, government of the state, uh, including, among other things, to give, increase the water for the city and also regarding the trains we took the new agreement to give to Nuevo Leon all the rights for the um, for the station and the transiting for the uh, railroad so they can utilize about 120 kilometers of uh, routes and to better the transport and the routes. And I'm going to take uh, uh, what you're saying regarding the metro. I'm going to ask for information and tomorrow or the day after I will be precise as to what we are going to be going forth with and what are we doing what resources are being destined for that for Nuevo León yes I'm committing that tomorrow the next day I will give you information regarding this matter So regarding the tariffs, what about this new imposition of tariffs? So doesn't it seem like President Trump, especially during his election times, keeps asking for more and more? And what do you uh, think about this matter? That good, the relationship with the U.S. is very good and with the President Donald Trump. And that is why I have confidence that we are going to be able to, con to meet head on this new uh, defiance regarding uh, tariffs uh, on steel and also related to exportation of tomatoes because the relations are actually good. They do listen to us. And there is respect to the governments of Mexico just as we respect the government of the United States. So therefore, we're going to review the matter well. And 
and we can count on, besides the good relations, also good negotiators and diplomats that have already dealt with these matters with the representatives of the government of the U.S. And if today, Jesus Yade spoke of representatives of the U.S., he, they would um, uh, answer the phone to him. And if he solicited an audience or an interview, they would allow it or give it. And the same way also with Marcelo Abrat, with the Secretary of State. And I, and I can say the same with Mar Garcia Marquez, Secretary of Commerce of the U.S. The relations are actually good. Yes, there are some circumstances. I've already explained these. I've already let you know very cautiously because we don't want to get involved in the internal politics of other countries. But that's to substantiate politics. We're always going to be dealing with matters. That's why we assume this responsibility. And I want to ask you, what do you say the, uh, the dissidents of the police that do not accept the new reform and Those that do not accept, they're within their rights not to accept. You don't always have to say yes. We are free. Everyone should be able to do whatever they consider most convenient. And I believe that they advanced with the um, agreement, but there's always going to be differences or dissidences because that is part of a democracy, liberty, and it needs to be guaranteed. How many police are not accepting these? I have, according to the information I have, They've already agreed to this agreement, and I don't want to to diminish those that that don't accept the arrangement. I respect them. Some are saying that the leaders are not represented. They said. They don't. They, some of them say they don't know the uh, what the agreements are, and today we're going to be making the. There's going to be tables of information, and we're going to be making sure that the information gets out. And uh, the federal police um, are informing, and they're enrolling to participate in the different duties, many of them. So therefore, when they uh, make, come to an agreement on the, they'll be um, able to clarify what's in doubt. And the other thing, I don't give my opinion because I don't want it to be misinterpreted. 
there's a legal procedure, and this has to do with Congress of, of the state. There's certain situations that are legal, and we need to wait. Whatever they resolve, the uh, competent authorities. This is not a matter that has to do with the executive branch of the federal government. A few minutes ago, you mentioned that there's that some of the federal police measure your public opinion and what information are you using? We have no system to apply for, for questions. We don't contract anybody or no, no, neither do we go ahead and ask. They just informed it to me in this, this morning. The Secretary of Public Security, and I believe that it was uh, regarding some kind of public question there in the media. <clears throat> and I do believe him because I also do have the pulse of what's happening, public opinion. When they took the road of Pachuca, it was the same people that was very bothered asking them. The people didn't like it. So what they informed me today was that 66% of the people refuse the movement. That's the information I have. I didn't ask for details regarding how they came up with this or who did it, the questioning. But, but I, I figure and I believe that that's how the people manifested themselves. What about Baja California? Don't you think that in, there might be some kind of fraud and generic terms that um, it was a two-year term and all of a sudden it's a five-year term. Yes, he says if there's something that is being manipulated that should not be happening, it will be resolved from the tribunal of the electoral tribunal. That's their job. But what I can assure you is that, I can say is that we will not intervene. <laughs> it's not like it was before with a line. A line for the presidency. That I can assure you. We will not get involved in these matters. Everyone is entitled to their opinion. There's a fan of points of view. Some are for, some are against. And for that, we have a tribunal. 
And now we are attentive that there not be any consignment. That legislators and judges and magistrates and ministers act or behave without uh, restrictions. Remember that, that it's a system that's presidential, this one of ours, that before you get abused. And it's a tradition that comes from afar of the strong man, of the major, uh, the monarch, the sectional. This has ended. It has come to an end. Now the executive is not the power of uh, powers. We've talked about this in, on several occasions, even on uh, communication of the presidency in the courts. They used to have a phone. Yesterday I was talking that in a respectful manner I was going to send a letter to, letter to the president of, of the Supreme Court that is also the president of judication of giving a, um, um, they gave release to a uh, a presumptive uh, torture that he didn't even have to show up to declare himself. And they gave him like a forgiveness. This is very grave because the right to um, is sacred. Um, the right to be set aside. It's the essence of liberty. However, you can't utilize it to cover up acts of corruption or to, for um, impunity to prevail. It cannot be an instrument to commit injustices to violate human rights. Entonces, so therefore, today I found out in the morning that he revoked that mandate of forgiveness, or he didn't give it completely. However, there is some kind of correction so that the presumptive accused needs to show up to declare. This demonstrates an attitude that's receptive and of collaboration of the judicial power. This speaks well of the judicial power. And we are going to respect the autonomy and independence of the judicial branch. But in these cases, because it has to do with uh, um, people in general, the fact that it's being brought up here, here that what we're doing here, it helps. so that between all of us, we continue to ensure that uh, 
imparting of justice. So in the case of Baja California, let the authority act with independence, with autonomy. procedure. I don't know what the question is. Due process. So he doesn't want to respond on something regarding due process because it's very delicate. So they won't use this as a pretext. And then they won't be able to do justice. But you all but you guys are professionals, and you know, you can investigate. <laughs> Regarding this imparting of justice, Forgiveness again to La Lozado or Lozoya and uh, 14 or 15 people. And she's part of the Supreme Court justice and she's dealing these things. And she's gotten 15,000 million pesos that, uh, that They've initiated a law that the jobs regarding this matter in particular, regarding the uh, presumption of the uh, forgiveness for torture, but also I will be talking about the necessity to combat corruption and impunity. And I am ex, um, allowing myself, I understand that he's a uh, honest person, and I dare to do this, letting him know that I have respect and in his, he has an independence or, or his judicial power, and I do it due to my responsibility as President of the Republic. But I, I'm dealing with this matter. And we need to clean up this country of corruption. And we need require the participation of everyone, of all the citizens, and of the authorities. We need to participate. It's a campaign to clean, to abolish 
este rango de corrupción en México. Corruption in Mexico. Entonces, eh, yo estoy seguro and I am sure que se va a actuar de poder. The judicial power no will be pensado properly, and I am not even thinking of presenting ninguna iniciativa de reforma any initiative of constitutional reform eh, en el tema in the matter of del funcionamiento of the functioning del poder of the judicial power, que podría ser which I could do. Because I do have the faculties to present this initiative of reform to the Constitution. But I am not doing that because I believe that the processes of renewal of the institutions can be done if there exists. directors or authorities that are integral and honest que no that will not tolerate the corruption and, que este es el caso de la and I believe that Creo this is the case se puede. and I believe that it can be los with the ministers los and members del de la uh, uh, of the cabo. members of the uh, team eh. to uh, take forth the renovation of this power, making use of their autonomy. And I believe it's a good moment of the judicial power. And I insist that I have faith in that president of the judicial of the Supreme Court. And they're going to have to review regarding no millionaire uh, judges that have been getting commissions. Um, like it looks like bribes. That won't last for long because nothing, absolutely, that has to do with, with bad management of public resources will be tolerated. <coughs> this thing that you, they have already made a claim and that we are aware of and we have all the uh, data the instruction is that when you presume and there are proofs or evidence that there exists corruption you let them know immediately we don't cover anything for nobody. No, hay there is no impunity. And another question regarding the resources, private initiative, and uh, external sources regarding the uh, earthquake. There was 32,000 million pesos that were sent for that. What was the report regarding that? Because it was given to the Department of External Relations. What is the report you received or that he received? Where did that money go? Because the people, obviously, that lost their homes and their property, they still have not been reconstructed. And some are still living like living with their families. We're going to ask for the information regarding this matter in particular. I offer you this. Because there was resources that were sent to the video commission of the Hacienda. And the resources that they had information that they were given the uh, uh, external relations. However, in all the cases that I've found, or understand, no. 
So we're gonna check regarding these funds. See? Yes, there are video commissions regarding the law of austerity is to put order on all these video commissions. There's many of every type and many that are created so that they will not be supervised so they can be managed in a discretional way. So we're trying to put order to these things, but we'll get the information. So I can't, so I won't speak without having data. That's two. and excesses. I say specifically because of the Mexican Council of uh, Tourism, uh, Claudia Claudia was in charge of, and uh, Victor Flores was in charge of this. I have the information giving a new or, um, organization and who's going to be at its front and what are the funds and resources will become the private initiatives and of the municipalities and which were the excesses that were given in the past. Do we have information that it was not uh, handled with uh, transparency. The, the uh, fund for uh, trans um, that had to do with foreign um, and they were charging taxes to uh, tourists, the ones that came to our country. And that fund was supposed to be utilized for promotion of tourism. But they, it was detected that there was poor management. We decided to cancel that fund. In this year, we expect to get about 8,000 million pesos. And that fund will now be passed on to financial uh, uh, to finance the Maya trade. That's the destination that it has. That most of those resources will go to. A small or percentage will be destined to strengthen the functions of migration. And yes, they had bad management. There's an open investigation. Because the same thing. They did this whole campaign defending the fund and opposing that they utilized the resources well because they said it would all fall down, fall apart. This tourism, that it was indispensable, this fund. They used to send money to the, to the foreign areas from that fund. And it was very poorly managed. So soon we will be letting you know the results from this investigation. And we will not permit corruption. And that's why there's these instances. Imagine they had offices, not only in the case of this fund, 
México. But also that program Pro México. 50 or 60 offices in the cities of the most important areas of the world. I always give the example. Have you ever seen an office pro France or pro Germany or pro Brazil? So they created all these apparatuses a parallel to the embassies. But what do the embassy ambassadors do of other countries in Mexico? What do they do? Well, they promote their countries. They uh, promote their factories, their businesses, and they promote and represent their towns. So why not have our embassies that are supposed to do that function, let them start? They are already starting. And those have already been closed, those offices. <coughs> and it's the same thing with the fund of the tourism. And yes, in effect, it's a sting with corruption. It's yuck, gross. And that's how we say in Tabasco. Ishkareka. 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 Which means it's disgusting, it's stinky, it stinks. Um, so no, no corruption. Regarding corruption, the corruption uh, was also involved in the housing of uh, Peña Nieto and Enrique Herrera. Will they be initiating the White House or the municipalities? Will they be getting the resources from this famous White House? No, you can't make those things go through until that it doesn't involve judicial due process. You can't confiscate of goods unless you have judicial process. So therefore, the Institute to give people back the stolen goods will be receiving whatever is confiscated once it has been given our information and they resolve the, 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 the district or attorney general. And now the Marines and the Army, like we get a uh, report every week as to what they are confiscating in dollars, in vehicles, in vehicles. And recently, we detained a helicopter, a helicopter La semana. In the, within the week. Armas, and it was full drugs. of arms, drugs. Entonces, todo eso so all these things pasa are passed to the fiscal uh, or the attorney general. La ley. And so what we look for with the law is the dominion and in particular, the utilization of these funds. Yes. This que is de that in, in a rapid, expedited way, you can return the funds to the people. Because before, it would take such no a long time, and they would no not inform, and nobody knew where those goods wound up. Now, we have information every two weeks and what we expect is that we have a mechanism so that every 15 days they will be giving the goods to the citizens. One of the modifications that was went to the initiative was in that sense because the vigilant 
uh, people in the use of their faculties. They were proposing more time for the processing and for the uh, returning to the, to the people what was taken. And I spoke with them in a respectful way to let them know and so that there will be a mechanism to evaluate the goods in order that that the judges or the judgment continues and at the end if they have to return it the good goods what will be returned is the money according to the the, well, according to what the um, value was, but that would be posterior. So we're trying to shorten the times in order to not to lose where the things are, so they won't be spoiled and damaged, so they won't be wasted during the management in the conservation. So that's what the institute is for. That is called like that. Uh, the institute to return stolen goods to the people. And every 15 days, we're going to be giving these goods, uh, the funds for these goods. So there will always be some because because they're always obtaining goods of every type vehicles, boats, uh, properties, arms, lots of those that has nothing to do with the army but residences, jewelry, dollars, everything, whatever they obtain, will be returned. One more question. Let's go there. We're going to finish shortly. Quiero preguntarle, usted ayer fue crítico sobre estas indisciplinas que tuvieron los miembros de la Policía Federal. ¿Usted cree que pueda confiar en que estos elementos pasen ahora a la Guardia Nacional? Se les abre la puerta con este acuerdo, pero después de lo que pasó, de las críticas que usted hizo por esta indisciplina y que por esto se necesitaba la Guardia, ¿sí se puede confiar en que estos elementos ahora formen parte de esta corporación? So, will you be able to trust that these people that are going from the federal police going into the new police. Many of them are repentant and embarrassed. And they were misinformed, many of them. Others did not participate. For example, now there were some uh, participants from the judicial police that, police that were incorporated in, to the National Guard. And they were maintained. And others did decide to participate. Or they came to Mexico if they were in the States. But there was few of them and the process was just beginning for the exams. It's important to note that the uh, exam for entering the National Guard is being applied to elements of the Army and the Marines. new recruits 
that want to form part of the national guard and the, and the uh, federal police. So everyone gets this testing. It's not just them. It's not just the federal police. So therefore, in the exams, there's those that that pass the exams and some that don't because we're being cautious that they be the very best and not only that they be integral people honest people but they also have to be in good physical condition because of that job that they're going to be doing. But that does not mean that they cannot help those that do not pass the exam and they can help in other activities. For example, in the exam, there's questions. There are those that some that are not in uh, due to a health condition are not able Maybe they have hypertension or diabetic. That does not mean that you're going to fire them. I'm sick. I have hypertension. And I'm in this activity and I take care of myself. But for the National Guard, it's a different job. Maybe it wouldn't function there because the age. But this, this is another type of activity. It's not the same job. But they are not being set aside. Yes, you can help in these other matters. But I used to explain the government used to contract and I say contract because the number has been reduced but they used to do about 50,000 private police contracts to guard in uh, properties or installations The active members of the federal police are only 20,000 in total if you remove the administrators. So there is many possibilities of work. And with the same income, with the social security, without any problem, and there is also those that are very apt for National Guard that are passing the exams and that including were on the waiting list. The process was held due to the conflict, but they'll continue doing their exams. Of these 20,000, how many do you consider will go into the National Guard? <laughs> According to what I've been informed, in general terms, about 60% are going in of those that pass the exam for the Guard. The certain thing is it's those that that are uh, least are going in are from other corporations. The percentage is the most from Marines is greater. I don't have the data here with me now exactly. I believe it's about 90%. And in the case of the of the federal police, it's about 60%. In general. 
what does this mean also? It means that they were not attentive in the corporation for many years. The discipline, professionalism, all these things. That all these things that need to be being done constantly in the in the police force. Even the officials they have to maintain their weight. Do exercises. If not, then they can't enter. It's not a matter of discrimination. And they do have programs. They have a program that's very important. Where they are teaching to eat well, to eat right. With good nutrition. That doesn't mean expensive food. It just means eating right. To be have equilibrium. Carb with carb carbs and protein, vitamins, all all things that have to do with with a good diet. To put aside certain things. And we don't want to talk about that. <laughs> Everything that has to do with snacks and, and um, fast food. And exercise above. Um, we have to do this. Exercise. All, all the people should try to do exercise. Of course, it's not obligatory. However, it's all. It's due to you making that choice. Another question. that's got something to do with human rights. I respect I do not consider that they have a lot of moral authority because they were silent. They were com complicit when the state was the principal violator for their human rights. So now, <clears throat> with us, they're acting in a different way. In any case, it's their job and we're going to respect it. But I don't like the hypocrisy. It's not possible that they did nothing to uh, evaluate uh, ABC um, uh, nursery and now they're they're fighting us on the protection for the the money for the youth. And so they're fighting us on that, you know, the money for the young people. So they never even looked into what happened with the, um, uh, there was like a fire with some young children um, were killed. So now the human rights people for now, they have a possible 
a strange violation of human rights. Because how can they, they keep um, wire this subrogating and privatizing the social um, care for children? And why this recommendation? It's the same thing. In the case of the National Guard, that they did this in order to demand that they halt the, the massacres in the previous governments. So what did they do? To demand the presentation of the children that uh, the young people of Juan de San Alfa. So that's enough of simulations. Take off your masks. However, they are all within their right. If the judicial power decides that they modify the laws, we'll do it. She wants to ask about that in Cahuila, they're saying they will not be receiving any more um, caravans of immigrants because they don't have infrastructure that's necessary to receive them. What do you think about this that's being generated? I believe this should not be encouraged to uh, refuse immigrants, xenophobia. We should not deny the strangers. It's not human. We're humane. And I've said it before and I'll repeat it because it has to do with, with be having consequences. In the Bible, it, it talks about protecting the foreigner and not to mistreat the foreigner. So how can we go to our temples? How can we go to church? If we do not comply with the um, uh, commandments, how can we deny human beings that are looking for life however they can. For what reason? Why these campaigns? This xenophobia? We don't like it that they treat bad our people. And we defend them. So now, how are we going to treat bad that those that for necessity come through our territory in search of better conditions of life and work. That's enough of that. It, it needs to, it has to do with this rancid conservatism. It's bothersome. We should not mistreat immigrants. And I do not care if you don't like, if a lot of them don't like it. Because the push question regarding the treatment of migrants, the majority of people, that it's very sad. They're saying that we should not have any consideration for them. That is not Mexico. That has nothing to do with, with our traditions of fraternity and solidarity. The, the federal government is saying they just are not ready 
because they were asked to receive 18,000. And they said, it's not true. If this is a campaign of rumors. Were, they're not going to be returning 18,000. They were asking me, for example, that, that I not return uh, thousands to Piedras Negras. We do not have that purpose. And it's a campaign without doubt that is um, promoted by conservatism to deny I consider it inhumane and inadequate and also treacherous. I'm glad that you're asking this, Carmen, regarding this, because I'm making a call out not to encourage this genophobia in our country or to, to uh, just, we are all migrants from from the initiation of humanity all of us are migrants those of us that live in this city this is the city of um, people finding each other for example where do we come from the majority of us and our parents and why did we come to this state so that we can progress and, and go get ahead? So where are the inhabitants of Nessa? And what have they done? What have they accomplished? They populated and developed a Nessa with their work. So how can we now act like this, behave like this? We have to have solidarity. So where are the people from Tijuana from? Let's speak now uh, straight up. Why did they go to Tijuana? Because they wanted to go to the other side. And for one reason or another, they wound up staying there. And Tijuana is now their home. And the original people from Tijuana acted in a solidarity uh, and fraternity and received many. And now, why are we now going to start behaving this way of uh, not accepting immigrants. This is the conservatism. Let that be clear. It's the same thing. It went to the extreme that they were even saying they're bringing us diseases. That's discriminatory. It's racism, classism. And it's also very inhumane that those that have the intention to behave in an inhumane way and turn their backs on them to the pains of humanity and let them aisle themselves and become an individualist and look for only to satisfy their own personal ambitions. There used to be a phrase that I used to use that I even wrote when I was uh, uh, for the uh, Institute of uh, something or other. 
But now you can't say it because now it's been demonstrated and corrected that now even animals have sentiments and we need to take care of them. But the phrase is the way it was originally said. when they did used to have this concept regarding animals. It used to say, it said like this, who has an aspiration to be an animal can do so naturally. They can turn their back to the pain of humanity and work on his own behalf for his own gain. That phrase is good, and I'll leave that for you as homework as to who's that philosopher. It's one of the most important philosophers that has existed. It's a very good phrase. Thank you. We'll see each other tomorrow. Goodbye.